we have a function that's Riemann integrable over this open closed interval alpha beta. And the function is also continuous at point A and B inside this interval. And shows that the limit of integral from A to B of f of x plus h minus f of x over h dx is equal to f of b minus f of a as h approaches 0. First, I'm going to show you a solution and tell me what are the mistakes. The mistake, the problem of this solution. So-called solution. So because, first of all, because we notice that this form looks like a derivative form. Right? So maybe we can switch the order of limit and integration. Okay? So in other words, first let's calculate the limit. Then let's calculate integration. A limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Then we do integration. Now inside here, obviously it's the derivative of f at x. Right? So that is equal to integral from a to b f prime of x dx. Now let's do integration. Antiderivative f of b. Right? Antiderivative f of prime is just f. So f of b minus f of a. What's the problem with the solution? Pause the video for a second. Now, the problem with this solution is that first of all, we don't know if the order of limit and integration is even switchable. We don't know that. Right? Second of all, even if we can switch the order of integration and limit, we don't know if there is a derivative at x. Right? We don't know. No, we, we, we were never told. Right? We were only told the function is continuous, not everywhere, but only at a and b. Right? Function is only Riemann integrable over this closed interval, not necessarily differentiable. Right? So we don't know that. So now here's the correct solution. So first of all, because like a f is Riemann integrable, right? So it's meaningful. So let's do some substitution. First, let's copy, copy down this a, b, h. Let's take out the 1 over h, because right now h is fixed. But later, let h approach 0. Now, f of x plus h minus f of x dx. And for this, for this part, so that is 1 over the group of a, b f of x plus h dx minus 1 over h integral from a to b fx dx. So for only for this part, for this part, the let x plus h equal to t, and for dx is equal to dt. Right? Also change the boundaries. Right? When x is equal to a, t is equal to a plus h, and we have b plus h. So f of t still dt. Right, perhaps also, also write as a plus h to b plus h f of x dx. Right, still the same thing. So right now, what do we have? Right now, it's actually 1 over h bracket integral from a plus h to b plus h f of x, the same f, dx minus integral from a to b f of x dx. Right. So perhaps let's draw a graph. So first, the integral from Integral from a b a plus h uh, b plus h uh, h is uh, small enough 
Now let, we're gonna, right now let's fix, fix H. Right. First of all, A, A plus H to B plus H. Same function. Minus the same function integral from A to B. So this minus that. So the middle part, right, the common part is cancelled out. So only this integral minus that integral. Right? 1 over h b to b plus h f of x dx minus integral from a to a plus h f of x dx. And also, let's just focus on this part. 1 over h times integral from b to b plus h fx dx. So this looks like a, we can apply the fundamental theorem of calculus. Right? The fundamental theorem of calculus tells us that as long as, for example, let's just denote g of x as Integral from a to uh, a to x f of t dt. Right? Suppose if if f is Riemann integral Riemann integral over the interval a to b, for example, and if also if the function f is continuous, continuous. Right now, maybe fix x, right? As long as it's continuous at x, it doesn't have to be continuous everywhere, right? It's just some random fixed x, continuous at x. Then we can definitively say that g is differentiable at this point x. And derivative is just f of x. X is fixed. So right now, of course, a condition is satisfied, right? So this time we can just say, okay, f g of g of b, right? g prime of b, is it differentiable at b, right? As long as it's Continuous at B, right? Riemann integrable over. Yeah, is it? Yes, Riemann integrable, right? The B is inside this interval, right? Is it continuous at B this time? Is it? Yes, continuous at B. So definitely, it is differentiable at B, right? Derivative at B is just f of B. So likewise, distribute this one over h to this part, right? This part for the same reason. As h approaches, as h approaches zero, right? That's because we, as long as we let h approach zero, so this essentially becomes, so isn't it just over h g of G, like I said, I denote the G as X, yeah, G of X. Right, so this becomes G, G of B plus H minus G of B. Right, G of B is integral from B to B. That is zero, right? Still the same thing. G of B plus H right? minus zero over H. Exactly the definition of the Derivative at B, right, of this big G. As long as we let H approach zero, then this will just approach G prime of B. Right, exactly the derivative. Right, for the same reason, distribute 1 over H onto this integral. Right, so this will approach f of a 
in the end, right? As, as h approaches zero. So in the end, we have f of b minus f of 